Hey there, good afternoon. I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation, and we're talking today of timber stand improvement. Today is your habitat, uh, hints, and we are on a, actually on private property and talking timber stand improvement. I'm very grateful to have here with me Missouri Department of Conservation's Michael Bill. He's going to tell us a little bit more about the importance of timber stand improvement, or better known as TSI. And we're going to get to him right now. We're going to flip this around. We're going to talk about it, kind of show you why it's important, how they did it, and so forth. So let's let's flip this around here. Hey there, good afternoon, Michael. How's it going? Good, how are you doing, Lucas? Doing well, doing well. So good. timber stand improvement. What is timber stand improvement? Okay, why? Well you, can, well, you can look out here and you can see these high stumps throughout this entire stand here. And this is what we call TSI, or timber stand improvement. So none of these stems were commercial, meaning that they had no economic value. So we worked, or this landowner worked with MDC and got cost share to help pay, help pay for this process. And you see these high stumps here. Yeah. Many of them were treated with a chemical to keep them from re-sprouting. And in this woodland unit, we're really trying to open it up. You can see we have pretty open crown conditions here. And this TSI has opened it up even more. And so we've had two burns in here, one four years ago, one two years ago. And we've done this treatment here to open it up even more. And you can see the amazing amount of herbaceous response we have here. I was talking with the uh, private lands conservationists about this. And he said this was a dead zone before. Oh, wow. Nothing but oak leaf litter, no real great habitat here. And now look at it. We have great bugging habitat, brood habitat. As we were walking in here, a, a deer jumped up. This has been a this is really excellent wildlife habitat here. Now, when you do timber stand improvement, like you do those cuts, why, why do we let it lay? I mean, a lot of landowners, I'm sure myself as well, if I didn't know what it was, what it's about, I'd want to cut it and go put it in a brush pile or something. Why let it lay? Right. Well, mm. the, the tops that you see here are also, they're also really great habitat, and through time they're going to melt down. Um, you get some burns in here. I did want to note that when they did the TSI here. It was done during leaf off conditions, and that was intentional. Mm. When we have the leaves off, it was done during the winter time. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have that extra fuel that the leaves provide. So when we burn in here, it's not nearly as hot. And so you look across here, you'll see all these tops. They were cut in the winter time. They don't have any leaves on them because we, we intentionally did that during the winter time. So I know it looks a little brushy out here, but if you're a deer trying to hide a fawn, or if you're a turkey trying to find a nest to, hi to hide in for your nest, uh, it makes really great habitat for that. And it makes good small game habitat as well. So, but through time, that's going to melt down. This herbaceous component is going to get even better. Uh, we'll put burn back in here again now, and uh, we'll just continue this process here uh, in trying to encourage this herbaceous forb uh, and grass component here. So, Michael, so these stumps, see, they cut them pretty high. What's the point of cutting a tree that high? Why wouldn't you cut it close to the ground? Well, there's a couple of advantages that for one, it's much faster for a contractor to work here. They're not having to bend over to do that. But the secondary uh, advantage of that is that uh, stumps are less likely to re-sprout here. So we're not really trying to encourage re-sprouting here. We're trying to keep these trees from re-sprouting and encourage this herbaceous component. If we were to cut them really low uh, to the ground, they're gonna have more, they're gonna be more likely to re-sprout and, uh, and, and they'll, be, they'll impact uh, our future herbaceous response we want here. So the higher the stump there, less likely it is to re-sprout and, and the better off we are uh, to create this kind of woodland condition here. Now, if I want to know, want to learn more about timber stand improvement, where would you tell me to get go look for it or where, who I got to talk to? There's some great resources online through the Missouri Department of Conservation's website. Uh, there is a nice handout, uh, a nice uh, booklet. Uh, it's a uh, forest manager for Missouri landowners. It's a great handout. You can get it at your local uh, Missouri office, Missouri uh, uh, conservation office. And then there's the forest management guidelines. And it does a really deep dive on a lot of different management options. And you can look that online at uh, MDC's website as well. So highly recommend that. And of course, you can always contact your local forester, your local private lands conservationists, and they can come out here, help you evaluate your site, help make a plan. So if this is something you would like to do on your property, they're going to help you uh, be able to meet that objective, and then we'll be able to help you with cost share to, to be able to, to help move that forward. Good deal. I appreciate it, Michael. Thank you very yep. much. And thank you for all tuning in uh, this afternoon. And again, if you want to learn more about Tander Stand, uh, timber stand improvement, please check out our website. I'm going to echo what uh, Michael said, mdc.mo.gov, and just search timber stand improvement. And also you can find your local private land conservationist there as well. 
Thank you very much for tuning in, and thanks for uh, tuning in today to Habitat Hints. Have a great rest of the day.